Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm sharing with you my tips for food fear during lockdown. I'm writing this or I'm speaking this at the same time as England have gone into their third national lockdown. Even though I'm not currently in England, I live in the Netherlands, I'm British, but I'm pretty sure more women all around the world need to hear this message right now and need this support, so here I am. Um, lockdown is stressful enough, right, without feeling the added worry of the eating, like what to eat, what not to eat, especially when a lot of us are stuck at home and it might feel like we're somehow joint at the hip with the fridge or our children's goodie drawer, right? I get it. And alongside this as well, there is anxiety provoking news all the time about food scarcity, about resources scarcity. I'm not even going to mention toilet paper at this moment. But all of this combined with disordered eating, chronic dieting, binge eating, emotional eating, pre-lockdown, before any of this even happened, all of this combined together is enough to send the best of us into some kind of turmoil. So I'm going to share with you today four tips on how to navigate food fear and food stress during this difficult and strange time. But first, I think it's really important to tackle the scarcity mindset in general. So a scarcity mindset then, or a scarcity mindset, I'm probably saying it wrong, but scarcity mindset. What is a scarcity mindset? A scarcity mindset is the general feeling of then, of not being enough. So all of your actions, all of your decisions are driven by this lack of not enoughness, especially if you have been or still are a chronic dieter. If you're always restricting certain food groups or calories, you've been telling your brain for months or even years that there's not enough food. Food is scarce, right? And because your brain stem and what that is, it's the oldest part of your brain, your primal brain, your survival brain, it's always in survival mode. So its only job is to keep you alive. So it will not be responding rationally. It's always reacting to whatever situation is going on at the time. So if you're constantly telling your brain that you must restrict, you can't eat that, don't eat too much of this, stick to these food rules, etc., you're actually telling your brain that you're in a famine. And because this part of your brain is the most powerful due to its pure purpose to keep you alive, that's why it's a primal part of the brain, it overrides all things because it's for your survival, it will demand your biology to react the same way as if there was an actual real famine. It doesn't make sense to us in this world that we see, but that's how binge eating happens, that's the response, that's what's happening in your brain and there's no way around that, it's just the way we're wired. So it's only job then, the way your brain sees all of this dieting and restriction and food rules, it's only job then is to seek out food. And we actually think it's a form of self-sabotage when we end up binging and eating a lot of food, but it's actually self-protection. So all we want to do, or all the brain wants to do, is store as many calories as possible because it thinks there is a current or impending famine. Makes sense, right? It's not helpful to what we desire, but it makes sense. So that's why the scarcity mindset in regards to food, it's basically your brain acting on impulse in survival mode, which in reality appears to us that we're just crazy around food and we can't control ourselves. And with COVID-19 currently going on, the scarcity energy and the scarcity actions, not just in food in general, are all around us. Like people are hoarding things, toilet roll, um, panic buying as if there's never going to be enough. So I want to ask you, how are you feeling right now? Like how is this pandemic affecting your life, your relationships, your happiness? Like please let me know. I honestly want to help, so just please let me know how you're feeling right now. I want to move on now before I give you the tips 
to how your brain actually works. So it's obviously not a psycho psychology lesson, it's just a brief overview so you understand why the tips I'm giving you are going to help you. So when our brain stem, the primal survival part of our brain, the oldest part of our brain, sends out a signal to us that we're in survival mode, there's not enough, must seek food, etc. Its first point of call is to go to the part of our brain that's then responsible for our emotion. So it's like, hey, we need to panic, we need to be scared because there's not enough, there's not enough food, there's not enough resources, I'm scared. You need to be scared. And if it didn't create this emotion of fear, we wouldn't respond to that, we wouldn't actually do anything about it. So in the brain stem's eyes, it would think we would die, if that makes sense. This is all primal stuff that the way our brain works. And then when we feel any emotion, and in this case, um, fear, panic, and lack, the next communication point is the prefrontal cortex, which is the newest part of our brain. And when I say newest part, it's two to three million years old. This part of our brain is at the front and it's responsible for our rational decision-making. It's where our higher thinking comes from. It's where um, the best version of you like comes from. That's what we talk about when we say your higher self, like logical thinking. We want to be operating from this part of our brains as much as possible. So that's just a brief overview of like how it works. So the brain um, thinks there's lack, there's scarcity. It then sends an emotional response. You must be fearful in order to do the action of getting all the things, right? That's how it works. So now I wanna talk a little bit about stress and the world right now in general is feeling all of this fear and scarcity and lack lack of connection, lack of communication, lack of resources, lack, lack of freedom, all of the things, right? And if you're, if you're reading this or listening to this, then you're most likely experiencing stress and worry around food as well. And all of this creates even more stress. And stress causes our immune system to take a hit, which then leaves us even more susceptible to illness, but I promise you there is some positive help coming in this blog, I promise you that. And this is why it's incredibly important to lower stress during these times. By reducing our stress response, the lack of fear, we can start operating more from our prefrontal cortex of our brain, where our logical, rational thinking brain is, and we can make decisions that are then going to serve us if we're not in that constant fear on stress all the time. And I can teach you some tools that will help you to get out of the fear-based thinking and feeling so you can keep your immune system as strong as possible in these times and to reduce your stress around food and in general. So tip number one, it's something called box breathing. And box breathing, it's also known as square breathing, okay? So it's a technique used when taking slow, deep breaths, it can heighten performance and concentration, but this is the main reason I'm sharing this with you. It is a powerful stress reliever. It's also called four square breathing, right? So all you do is you sit comfortably on a chair with your back upright and your feet on the floor to ground you, and you breathe out first for the count of four, then you hold, so don't breathe for a count of four, then you breathe in for the count of four, hold, and then you breathe out for the count of four. So breathe out for four, hold for four, breathe in for four, hold for four, okay? And if you're new to box breathing, you may find it difficult at first to get the hang of it. You may feel a little dizzy, um, but this is normal. After you practice this more often, you'll be able to go longer without the dizziness feeling and it will help calm you, I promise you. And ideally, you'd want to repeat the box breathing cycle you guessed it, four times, like per cycle. So it doesn't even take that long to do. Um, and if you do box breathing several times a day, it will really help calm your nerves and your central nervous system and your stress response, okay? And box breathing activities, 
it enhances and switches on your rest and digest response, which puts your parasympathetic nervous system into the parasympathetic state, which basically means it gets you out of the sympathetic state of fear, fight or flight. It takes you out of that response and it brings you into the rest and digest response. And then because it helps us to relax, it allows us to get into a higher thinking state. So it strengthens the prefrontal cortex on our brain, our logical thinking part of the brain. And it's like taking that prefrontal cortex to the gym and working it out. It gets stronger the more you practice. And it, this box breathing is actually like a form of meditation because you're sitting quietly and you're focusing on your breath, which is calming in itself, and it is a form of meditation. And meditation increases the gray matter in your brain cells, and the gray matter is a really good stuff that we all want more of. It helps with learning, memory, cognitive processes, and attention. And not only does box breathing and meditation help almost instantly to calm you down and to help with your stress levels, it also creates long lasting change. Um, it creates long lasting changes in the brain because every time you sit down to practice box breathing, you're building up that gray matter in your brain and you're working out your brain for the good. So it will lower stress overall as well, not just in the moment. So that's amazing, right? So tip number two is community and connection. So I'm sure we're all feeling a lack of connection to others at the moment. Like personally, I find it really weird, like not being able to hug my friends or family when I see them um, and being part of a community, socializing, sharing thoughts, sharing our emotions with others, it releases oxytocin. So you may have heard of this hormone before, but oxytocin is typically linked to warm, fuzzy feelings, right? And it's shown in some research to lower stress and to lower anxiety. So oxytocin, it's sometimes known as the, as the cuddle hormone or the love hormone because it's released when people snuggle up or that when they bond socially. And there's not a lot of social bonding going on right now because of obvious reasons. So in these times, we feel ourselves missing a tribe we feel ourselves like lacking a place of belonging and, and a lack of tribe and belonging causes our brainstem, remember the brainstem, the most oldest primal survival part of the brain, it causes us to feel unsafe and then guess what, unsafe causes us to feel, it causes a stress response, then it leads to more stress. So it's so important during these times to globally come together and create that feeling of belonging and support for ourselves and for others. And we're so blessed to have the technology that allows us to do that. We're all in this together. So reach out to loved ones, make a connection a priority in your days to create a sense of community and connection. And of course, you're more than welcome. I'd love to have you in my Victoria's Secrets to Self Love membership community. And that's a really wonderful sacred space for women to come together to work on their self-love and their body image and you're fully supported by me and the other women in the group. You get coached by me, we have monthly workshops and workbooks, journaling prompts every day and every week, all the juicy things. So come hang out with us, you'll absolutely love it. It's a great sense of community and connection and it's only £50 a month with no contract and there's so much value for that investment so if you want any more info just click on the link or contact me I'd love to have you. Tip number three is stop consuming fear. Okay so I get that you want to watch the news to keep up to date with all the things but do you really need to watch it? that many times like okay and more, anything that we consume so TV, radio, the conversations we have, reading, listening, etc. It has a bigger effect on our mental well-being than you might think. The news is literally filled with negativity and even the way the news readers read the news, even that sounds depressing. Like, I'm not making this into a joke, but whenever I'm at my mum's house, she listens to a lot of news 
and I hear the news speak and I'm just like, even the voice is like tragic. Like, why can't we have a news channel purely for just happy things? Because there's a lot of good that goes on in the world, but for some reason we don't really talk about that. Maybe like five, not even five minutes at the end of a normal news channel, right? So stop consuming the message of fear, of lack and all those things, because by doing this, you're actually telling the brain that you want to seek more fear. And I know that sounds counterproductive, but whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on in your life, in your thoughts, expands. So you, if you must find out what's going on in the world, either ask someone to update you like I do, or only consume the parts that you think you need to hear. So just be really protective of yourself with what you're consuming. And while you're at it, stop talking about COVID to every person you speak to and stop focusing on what you can't do. Like instead, ask yourself, how can I shift from a lack, from a place of lack to a place of abundance? What can I do? Instead of focusing on the things we can't do, what are the things that we can do? Because remember, before COVID hit, right, we were constantly saying things like, if I had more time, I would do this. And if I had more time, I would love to do this or love to do that. This is your time, okay? So do all the things that you didn't have time for because your life was too busy. So learn a new language or treat yourself to an adult coloring book. Draw, start your own business, like read a book, read lots of books invest in yourself, join my monthly community, start one-to-one -one coaching. Don't let this difficult time become a difficult reality for you because your reality is your choice. Prime your brain instead, so prime your brain instead to focus on the positives and it will always then focus on the positives if you prep it and practice and prime it to be that way. That's a lot of P's. Prep, prime, positivity. That's cool. Um, and also, I absolutely love how fear has two different meanings, right? So if you take the letters from fear, so F can stand for forget, E can stand for everything, A can stand for and, and then R can stand for run. So fear could be forget everything and run, or it could be face everything and rise. Oh, I just love that so much. So which one do you choose? I choose to face everything and rise. Okay, you don't have to do this alone. Reach out to someone, get support. Reach out to me, we're all in this together. And tip number four is to give yourself permission to eat and I get that if you've got disordered eating, if you're chronically binge eating, dieting, emotional eating, all of the things, this is scary and I totally get it, I've been there, remember, but seriously, remove all of your food rules and instead of telling yourself what you can't eat, start focusing on what foods make you feel good. So instead of telling yourself you can't eat this, you can't eat that, Ask yourself, what foods make me feel good? What foods fill up my mind, body and soul with like joy and energy and abundance and health, right? Allow yourself anything you want to eat with no mental or physical restrictions or no impending diet, no impending thoughts of when lockdown's over, I'll start the gym and I'll lose weight or when this weekend's over, I'll start my diet on Monday. Like this is the scariest thing to do, to not have that to fall back on in your mind. But trust me, committing to this process long-term will bring you great food freedom. Even though you might not quite believe it, it will also bring you great health as well and happiness and acceptance and all of the things and all of the intuition and all of the things, right? But there's a lot of layers to this. So if you have disordered eating, if you have binge eating, emotional eating, if you're chronically dieting, there's a lot of layers to this process. 
and you most likely will need support on this journey. So again, we're not in this alone. Reach out to me. I'm an expert in this stuff. I've been there. I've coached so many amazing clients through it as well. So they're also in the same position as what I'm in now, which is totally free and happy, by the way. And actually, funnily enough, when I was writing this blog, which I'm now recording the video for now, something was coming to me. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but I had an idea to create something in the realm of food freedom that is affordable for everybody. So I'm not sure what it is yet, but let me know if that's something you're interested in. Um, the link is below and reach out to me and we'll, we'll make this happen together, okay? You don't have to do this alone. So I hope those have helped. Please let me know if you wanna try any of them, if you have any questions. I'm here for you and I'm sending you so much love and so much high vibes and I just love you and thank you for being you. You can have be and do anything you want and if you need help, reach out and I'll see you next time. Mwah.